We've talked about and tested how the Athlon 2 compares to the Pentium D and, and how the Quad Core Phenom compares against the Intel's Core 2 Quad, but how well does the Athlon X2 perform against a similarly clocked Core 2 Duo? That's what we're going to be looking at in this video. As you see, I have here a 2.8 GHz Athlon X2 7850 and a 2.8 GHz Core 2 Duo E7400. This Athlon was released a year after this Core 2 Duo, and it had a 95 watt CDP versus the Core 2's 65 watt. The benefit to the Athlon, however, was that it was much cheaper. This one in particular was the Black Edition, which meant it had an unlocked multiplier. So the unspoken selling point was that even if it wasn't as fast as its counterpart, you could just overclock it. The problem, as we all know, is that Intel's Core 2 lineup loved being overclocked. That's something I'll maybe compare in a future video, pushing each of these to their limits and see which one comes out on top. Now, as you may already know, these two CPUs are very different. AMD moved over to using its more efficient hybrid transport versus Intel still using its a standard frontside bus. Intel used 3 megabytes of shared L2 cache, while AMD had a smaller amount, but independent L2 cache. AMD also included 2 megabytes of shared L3 cache. So this is definitely not an apples to apples comparison. Each manufacturer did things their own way. So let's get started. With the Passmark tests, Intel seems to have beat out our Athlon in many of the tests and scored higher, but only by about 23 points. The memory tests are a similar story. Now with 7-Zip, someone pointed out that 7-Zip has its own internal benchmark, and I'm aware of this. I was just more interested in benching it, doing some actual work. And here we see the Duo finished about a minute sooner. So they're pretty similar, but the Duo did pull ahead. The same thing happens in Cinebench. Although the Athlon didn't lag behind too far, the Duo pulled ahead by about 2 minutes and scored 801 versus the Athlon's uh, 712. Handbrake also shows the Duo pulling ahead by about 1 encoded FPS average, and finished about 5 minutes sooner. Again, this doesn't seem like much, but this was only a, a 10 minute clip that it was encoding. If you were to encode an hour version of this video, it would take about 30 minutes longer on the Athlon. Moving on to 3D and games is when the Athlon actually starts to pull ahead. This may have something to do with its much faster hypertransport versus Intel's slower you know, frontside bus setup. Heaven shows this. Although it's not much, the Athlon pulled ahead, averaging about a half an FPS higher than the Duo. With Superposition, the same thing happens. The Athlon pulls ahead by about half an FPS, with the Athlon finishing with a score 70 points higher than the Duo. In GTA San Andreas, both CPUs performed about the same, with the Athlon occasionally pulling ahead. In the living room scene, you see that the frame rate is similar you know, between both, but once we leave the house and start driving around, that's when you notice the Athlon actually pull ahead slightly. GTA 4, however, being very CPU dependent, shows the duo pulling ahead of the Athlon. As usual, here are the settings I use across each. Again, I'm not going for max FPS here, it's more about how each CPU handles the same settings. Both CPUs felt about the same, with the duo having slightly less latency. The benchmark shows this with the Duo pulling ahead with an average frame rate about 6.5 frames higher. GTA 5 is based on a much more finely tuned and efficient game engine. Because of this it's less CPU dependent and it allows the Athlon to pull ahead in some areas. The ending benchmark favored the Athlon, allowing it to average about 2 FPS higher than the Duo.
Portal 2, as usual, ran fine on each, but the duo pulled ahead on average 5 to 10 FPS higher. The YouTube test runs a 1080 30 FPS video in a browser with all hardware acceleration disabled. I'll let you decide which did better. However, to me, it looks like the duo won this round. As usual, for the graphs, I compared it against another similar CPU. The Pentium dual cores were basically a stripped down version of the Core 2 Duo, sort of like a Celeron version. The dual core that I have is clocked a bit slower than the other two, but it still gives us an idea as to where everything stands. The Athlon here falls behind the Duo in everything that is extremely CPU intensive. However, for games that weren't CPU intensive, it actually pulled ahead, most likely due to its hyper transport, which allows for far more GPU bandwidth and, and less latency. Looking at these graphs makes you realize why so many people loved these AMD CPUs. Similar performance to Intel's, but usually half the price. Once again, if you made it this far, I'd like to say thank you and hope you'd consider subscribing and liking the video. To those that have subscribed and left comments, I really want to say thank you. I'm just over the halfway point for AdSense eligibility. If the channel can pay for itself, that would allow me to dump that money right back in buying more expensive and interesting items to make videos about. I can't believe, though, that I'm buying back all these parts that I once threw out thinking I'd never need them again. I had so many cool boards and PCs that I'm having issues now finding for sale. One favorite of mine was a, a, a dual slot one board, and with two Pentium 3s, you could easily smoke the early Pentium 4s. It was a lot of fun to play with. But anyways, goodbye for now, and I hope to see you next time.